Hi guys, welcome to the Eddie Cohn Academy of Jiu-Jitsu. Today I'm joined by one of the purple belts in the academy, um, Hamed. Um, and today we're going to talk about a very basic, simple technique. Um, how to escape the back mount position. When someone catches your back and you need to escape before you get choked out. Let's get into it. Okay, so sometimes when you train in the academy, um, or we see this position in MMA, we get our back taken. That is someone puts the hooks in, grabs the back, and ultimately they'll try and hold you in what we call a seatbelt grip, or they'll place their hand around the throat and go after the rear naked choke. Um, we see this in every UFC uh, tournament. There's one of these that happen, or sometimes more. Uh, and more than that, this can happen in the street. So I just want to go through some basic concepts and principles to help you understand the, the back take position. So the first thing is, when you get caught here, above everything else, we must protect the neck at all times. Um, I would know if he's a right-handed fighter or left-handed fighter by the way the fight began standing on our feet. Um, so his stance would dictate uh, which way his strong hand is, etc., etc. So I'm going to show you a couple of variations of defense. And then we're going to talk about escaping the position. Um, the first thing I like to talk about is if you get your back taken is you cannot sit hunched like this. This is way too easy for him to grab on and hold around me. It creates this vacuum here for him to hold. So I want to be a little postured as much as I can or I like to be all the way down. So it's postured all the way down. The next thing is I cannot let either hand get underneath here because this is going to limit the side of escape that I'm going to try and attempt and facilitate more options for him to submit me. So if we go back, say, 20 years, uh, when I first began training Jiu-Jitsu, um, master, my teacher, Master Hoyle Gracie, showed me this really nice uh, defense, which I still use to today, uh, to help me escape the back mount. It works both in uh, tournament fighting, it works in training in the academy, and in MMA, and of course in the street. So I know Hamed is a right-handed attacker, so the first thing for me is I'm going to put my right hand above my head here, head down, hand in this side here, so protecting my ear, and the second hand I'm going to put here, under the shoulder blade. So when Hamed comes around the corner with that hand, it's very easy for me to grab and defend and lock, lock the arm, and then maybe fall to that side to escape. Very simple. And then over the years, we develop our own kind of ways and methods, and other ways that I've been shown to do this, which is nice, um, they vary from just defending, defending fingers and thumbs, etc., etc. But today, like I said, it's a very basic uh, concept of this. What Hamed does is he puts the hand around the neck and I'm keeping both elbows in, not facilitating his hand to come under. So I'm immediately here. This hand comes in and the moment the hand is inside, the way the finger is pointing is our escape route. I'm never going to go this side if this arm is in because I'm falling into the choke. So the first thing is when he comes through, I'm going to try to slow down, but he manages to get through and Puts the head on this side here, yes. From here, look, I'm going to look to take away the choke. I'm going to fall to my shoulder and lean forward, push off of my heel, and make sure that my head is on the ground in front of him. Not with his head under here. So when I fall, I make sure my head is on the ground here. The next thing I'm going to do is, of course, grab the thumb and the hand here. And what I want to try to avoid at all costs is this hook, trying to reach here. No, never going to do that. From that position of controlling, when I hold the thumb and fingers, keeping my elbows in, keeping my chest forward, I'm going to slide this leg backwards like this. So that hook frees. And I'm not going to walk right now. The next position for me is to turn my hip up this way, whilst keeping my head on the ground. This weight on his knee, one, prevents him putting this hook back in, and two, prevents him remounting because my weight is on his leg. From that position, I can now abandon the choking arm, put my hand on the knee, 
and on the ground here. So I'm making this frame. And what I don't do is stay close to him. I move my shoulder away from him. And then as he mounts, as he tries to remount, I can control the knee and hip escape and then get back on top for the scramble position. So one more. We're here, he puts the hooks in. As the hand comes across, I'm a little late preventing, but I recognize the way out. Thumb control, finger control, elbows in. Head forward onto the ground, lift the hips up here. From that position, now this is nothing, you cannot finish me in this position. Slide the leg back as much as possible, turn the hip up, and then heavy. Elbow comes into the ground, leg on the knee here, and then if he tries to remount, I'm going to use the hip escape, hip escape, I could use the inside hook to knock him back over, and come back to that crossbody position. Okay guys, I'm, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, this is more geared towards uh, white belts or new, new beginners on the mat. This is a basic kind of escape that we teach them. I still use this all the way at black belt level. Um, I'm still using this escape and having good results with it. Um, you learn to develop and, and get your timing and all the rest of it throughout the time training. Um, if you like what you see, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, follow us on social media, at uh, EKBJJ. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below if you have any questions. We're always here to answer them. Uh, and take care. We'll see you next week for the next position.